In this video, I will explain and I will show you how you can evaluate the pictures from your own MRI of the knee. And as you will see, you don't have to be a doctor or a specialist to learn valuable information from it. But you just need to know how a normal knee looks like and what are the most important aspects to look for. So when you open the MRI on your screen, usually what you see is a somewhat strange image that you don't really understand. But that is not important. What is important is that somewhere on the screen, usually in a corner, you will find a set of thumbnails, as you can see here on the upper left corner. And each of these thumbnails represent a series of consecutive sections through the knee. What you need to look for is which thumbnail corresponds to which section. Now for the knee, there are always three sections, or three views if you want, and you see them there below. The frontal sections, or frontal views, going from the front to the back of the knee, the lateral sections, or the side views, and the third, the cross sections, or what we call the axial views. Now when you double click on one of these thumbnails, you will see that when you scroll through the images, that they represent one of these three sections. So let's do that. Double click and scroll, either with the wheel of your computer mouse or using the arrows on your keyboard. Uh, now let's take this one. What you see is that you immediately will recognize which section you are actually looking at. So this picture tells you that you're looking at the frontal sections. And once you have found the picture that fits best, it is time to start with your evaluation of the different structures. Now for each section, it is important to know which structures can be evaluated at best because they show up very well at that specific section. For the frontal sections or the frontal views, these are the medial meniscus, which is the wedge-shaped shock, shock absorber on the medial side of the knee or the inner side of the knee, the lateral meniscus on the outside of the knee, the medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, the medial femoral condyle, both the cartilage and the bone, the lateral femoral condyle, the medial tibial plateau, and the lateral tibial plateau. Now, if we go back to our MRI, you recognize these structures now easily, because from the drawing, you know how they look like, and you can very clearly evaluate them. Here you see, for example, the meniscus as a black triangle that should be homogeneously black in, black in sinial. Now, what is important by convention is that we look at the front of the knee. So if this is a right knee, left of the screen is the outside or lateral side of the knee. Right of the screen is the inside or the medial side of the knee. So here we are looking actually at the medial meniscus or the inner meniscus. And if you want to have a closer look at this meniscus, you can use the magnification loop, which usually you will find somewhere in the toolbar or with your right mouse click. And you can look in great detail um, if there is any disruption or tear in the structure. The next structure to look for is the medial collateral ligament, which you see nicely here. And sometimes you have to scroll through the sections to see the structures in its full configuration. And this is because the structure not necessarily lies in the same plane as the section so, therefore, you will have to go through a number of sections to be able to follow the structure. But this medial collateral ligament looks nice, actually. But here, you see, for example, a full tear of the medial collateral ligament. So, next we move on to the lateral collateral ligament. And as you see, also here, you have to scroll through a number of sections, up and down, to follow the ligament, and you see that this one also is intact. There is no interruption but you also see that it's a little bit more curly or less straight. And that is normal because the lateral collateral ligament is more loose by nature than the medial collateral ligament. So next we move on to the cartilage and the bone. And again, you can use your magnification loop and you look for a nice uninterrupted structure of the cartilage. And also you look for the presence of bone marrow edema. Bone marrow edema means that there is fluid accumulation in the bone, as you can see here. And that is always an unpleasant sign because it means that the bone here is overloaded. And this usually is caused by either a lack of shock absorption or because of excessive shock loads on the knee. So this is actually is, it's a dangerous or at least undesirable situation. Whenever there is so much bone edema as you can see here, this means that the patient usually should remain from any impact or should refrain from any impact load until this bone edema has disappeared. Also, this frontal view is very well suited for evaluating the cartilage layer. As you see here, a clear cartilage defect with, again, underlying bone edema because there is not enough protection against shock load onto the bone because of the cartilage defect. 
and you loop over the whole cartilage layer of the knee, medial and lateral side, and also the tibial plateaus to assess for the integrity of the cartilage layer and the presence of bone marrow edema. Now, once we have finished this frontal section and we went over all these key structures, we move now to the next thumbnail. Now let's try this one. Again, you scroll a little bit into it to detect which section or which view you're looking at. So this is obvious now that we're looking at the sagittal or the side view sections. And this section is especially suited for assessment of, again, the meniscus, both the anterior or front part of the meniscus, as well as the posterior or the backside part of the meniscus. The posterior part actually is the part where most of the meniscus tears are located, so you need to have a special look into this posterior part. The side view section is also very good to assess the patellar tendon integrity, and also to assess the Hoffa fat pad, which is a cluster of fatty tissue located between the patellar tendon and the front of the knee. The quadriceps tendon, the patella, the patellar cartilage, the femoral condyle cartilage, the tibial plateau cartilage, and the underlying bone to assess for bone marrow edema. Now, let's go back to our MRI and find a section where you can nicely view all of this. And important, the convention here with this section is that everything that's on the left side of the screen is the front of the knee. And everything that's on the right side of the screen is the back side of the knee. So, this is the anterior meniscus. And again, we recognize the wedge-shaped triangle structure of the shock absorber, which is your meniscus. And it has a nice solid black signal, which is perfect as well on the anterior as on the posterior part. Unlike this one, where you, where you see here a clear interruption, and this is an undersurface tear of the posterior part of the meniscus, which is a quite common type of tear, actually. So, next we look for the patellar tendon, which, again, should have a nice homogenic black signal. Unlike this one here, with severe patellar tendinosis, you see the patellar tendon is blown up, it is massively thickened, and there is also what we call a cleft, that means a longitudinal di disruption along the fiber directions. So that's what you don't want to see. Also, the Hoffa fat pad should be homogenic, and you should look out for the presence of scar tissue or a cyst in the Hoffa. Scar tissue is frequently present after previous surgery, and it can be a reason for persistent discomfort or pain after surgery. And obviously a cyst, like you see here, also can cause pain or a feeling of tightness around the patellar tendon. Next, we use our magnification loop again to look for cartilage integrity. And sometimes these images may be a bit deceptive towards the cartilage and you may have to switch to another thumbnail also in the side view plane to see it better. And as a matter of fact, that is the reason that there are more than three thumbnails than the ones you really need, because some of these thumbnails use different grayscales so that they become better suited for evaluation of certain structures, such as, for example, the cartilage. So if you switch to another side view thumbnail, like here, you see the cartilage layer is much more easy to evaluate now. And we can, again, we look for integrity of the layer. And actually, this grayscale is also very well suited for assessment of the ACL. The ACL is the anterior cruciate ligament. And also the PCL, the, the posterior cruciate ligament. You should see them as nice homogenic structures without any interruption and without any thickening. Sometimes, again, you have to scroll through a number of sections to assess the ligament, both the ACL and the PCL, over its entire length. Because the ACL, for example, causes a little bit oblique, so usually you won't be able to see it in its full length in one section. And you need to scroll over a couple of, over a couple of sections to see it very well. But as long as you see straight lines without any buckling, that is a good sign, that usually means that the ACL is perfectly intact. Here you see an example of a buckled ACL, which means that it is ruptured or torn, and you see that it's also blown up and massively thickened, which is again typical for a tear. The PCL or posterior crucial ligament is somewhat different, as, as by nature the PCL has a curved course on the MRI. But also there you need to look for structure integrity, absence of swelling and absence of disruption. We have to be careful that on some of the grayscales you will, will not be able to detect bone marrow edema. The only grayscales actually on which you will detect bone marrow edema are the so-called T2 sequences. And you can recognize these T2 sequences because the joint fluid, which is always present in the knee, is purely white on these T2 sections. And therefore these are the ideal sections to look for bone marrow edema because fluid shows up so nicely on them. 
For example, you can see here the joint fluid is purely white and you see the bone marrow edema on the femoral condyle and also on the tibial plateau in this example. And this is typical bone marrow edema that you will see in case of an ACL rupture. So actually, if you see this type of bone marrow edema, you don't even have to look for, further for the ACL because you know it is torn. So we call this a pathognomonic sign. If you have that type of bone marrow edema, it means that the ACL is torn. So this is a landmark that will tell you, okay, this ACL must be torn, otherwise it would have been impossible for bone marrow edema to be present on these two specific locations. And actually, it means that the tibia has dislocated forward during the injury, and this part has touched this part, causing the bruising of the bone and the bone marrow edema. So then the final thumbnail that we're looking for is the axial view. Uh, again, you recognize it when you scroll through the images, and this is what you want to see. This view is perfectly suited for evaluation of the patella, the patellar cartilage, the trochlea, the trochlear cartilage, and of the patellar tracking. With patellar tracking, we mean how the patella is located in the groove, whether it is nicely centered, or whether it is tilted somewhat, or a little bit off center compared to the groove, which is important because it is, a, it is very, very common to have a suboptimal position here. And it, and it can be a cause for pain, for example, pain in the front of the knee or anterior knee pain. So here you see a patella, which is more or less nicely centered in the trochlea. It has a little bit of tilting here, but that's okay, as long as the tilting is less than 8 degrees. And importantly, the convention here, in this section, is that we're looking from the foot towards the hip. So for a right knee, on the left side of the screen is the lateral side, and this is the medial side. And it is typical that the patella is tilted somewhat to the lateral side, but it should be, as I said, less than 8 degrees, and then it's still considered normal. If it is more than 8 degrees, uh, for example, like in this case, you see uh, we call this severe lateral tilting of the patella. And usually th that is caused because of insufficiency or weakness of the medial structures and tightness of the lateral structures. You see that in this case also that the cartilage on the lateral side of the patella is completely worn out. And here you see the cartilage intact, here you see it's worn out. And that is because of this chronic tilting which has eroded the cartilage on the lateral side because of the tilting. So other things to look out for is again cartilage integrity. Here you see an athlete that fell onto the knee and had, has sustained a full thickness cartilage defect here, which is easy to see on this section. And this is almost not visible on the other views neither the frontal sections nor the side sections. So again, each section has its typical lesions that you have to look out for. This actual section uh, actually is also very well suited for uh, looking out for a plica. A plica is a fold in the synovial membrane or the joint membrane, and this fold can be very solid and hard, and it may, and it may rub against the cartilage, and it could be a source of local pain or, or inflammation. And, and also this section, is uh, this axial section, is also very well suited for detection and assessment of a baker cyst. A baker cyst is a cyst in the back of the knee. It is always located between the semimembranosus and the, and the gastrocnemius tendon at this point, and it's easy to see on this section. So, remember, these are the things to look out for on your own MRI, your friend's MRI, or your patient's MRI. And, of course, you, you can also read the protocol of the radiologist, but as you understand from this video, Images tell you more than a thousand words and I think it's important for everybody, not only for doctors and physios, but also for patients to look at their own MRI, especially when they have an evolving problem, so they can see and assess six months later or one year later how their injury has evolved, whether it has stabilized or has become worse. And the only way to do that is by looking yourself at the picture. And I've tried to show you in this video how you can do so and hopefully you enjoyed it and learn something from it. Thank you for watching.